Hey there, Poka fans. Welcome to Let's Play Games West Virginia. I'm Kevin, this is Heather, and this is Poka Monday. It has continued to be a crazy week for Pokemon Go. I don't know when Niantic is going to run out of stream, but ev or Steam every week has just been thing after thing after thing, and this week was no different. We've had like four things this week, which is super exciting. There's been a new news event almost every single day. Mm -hmm. The first one we wanted to talk about is the new Halloween event that is starting. That started five days ago. Woohoo! And in commemoration of it, you can't see it, I made a Squirtle pumpkin, which looks much cooler in the dark. But despite the fact that that pumpkin is Squirtle, uh, this week we've seen increased spawns of Houndor, of... Uh, Puchenia. Dus Puchenia, of Duskull. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shuppet, all of the dark type, the spooky ones, even the new Drifloon, the little cute balloon uh, that is apparently a collection of lost souls. Uh, we've also seen uh, the release of a couple new Pokemon that we will have some video footage of, which are new Gen 4 Pokemon. Um, but here we are. We have, uh, first off, my seven-day reward. So uh, we have Suicune here. Um, I was just catching another one, uh, was it today? Or was that your footage? No, this is yours, and this is from your, your okay. previous one. So uh, that is Suicune, and um, I have noticed that I had a particularly hard time catching Suicune today. Not as much, um, well, less so with that Suicune. But this is the last few days of Suicune, and then we're going to get a new special research Pokemon. And we also want to talk about a little bit later, there's actually an entirely new special research aside from field research. Yes, uh, but that's later to come. Um, as Suicune, sorry, I mispronounced it. As Suicune is um, leaving our field re or sorry, field research seven day reward, we are going to be getting a new Pokemon for November. Um, it's going to be pretty buggy. <laughs> um, we'll talk more about that in a bit or well, whatever. So here we are, speaking of bugs, I am doing a Krikatot raid uh, because sometimes when you decide to do a raid, even if it's a low level raid, uh, the chances of getting a um, better IV Pokemon it is there. So uh, it, even if it's your free raid pass for the day, it, it might be worth it. They're always going to be over 70 and usually over 80%. Mm -hmm. uh, for the raid bosses. So if there's a hard to get a high IV one, like the coming up Gengar event, um, then you're definitely going to want to use those raid passes judiciously and acquire the highest IV Pokemon you can if you're IV hunting. It's true. But you also get a lot of XP and Stardust, so it's worthwhile even if you don't particularly care about the Pokemon. If you're around and you have a free raid pass, why not? And especially if you're using a lucky egg to get that added XP bonus or a star piece for added uh, mm -hmm. Stardust bonus, well worth it. Absolutely. Because uh, even then, if you do a level 1 raid, I think you end up with 3,000 3, XP. Unless you're using a lucky egg, in which case it's 6,000? Uh, yeah, I think so. 6,000, yeah. And to put that into perspective, your best first catch of the day with a curveball uh, is going to be like 600 XP. So mm -hmm. it's basically like 10 first day catches at optimum thing, and you get that every day for free if you were so inclined. Sure. You showing off your shiny batch gear? Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Oh, that was when I was recording my shinies for the possibility of a shiny trade with someone else. Mm. So I guess I just uploaded that to our uh, drive page, and there we are hatching a Machop. So um, sometimes you just get the run of the mill with your egg evolutions, and you can never really predict what. I've been waiting uh, to perhaps hatch a Shinx, a Gen 4 um, evolution that comes out of eggs or is in raid battles exclusively. So um, I'm trying to hatch as many as possible. And there you see uh, a Chansey. That would be my third Chansey in a row. I've had a couple through ch uh, trades, but I just wanted to say, hey, Andy, who's in the chat, joined us and just wanted to say, hey. Hello. But yeah, I think I ended up with a couple Chanseys via trade. Um, but this is the spooky message. So this is the new uh, special research that dropped uh, this past week. There's uh, just three parts to it. And uh, I'm uh, there's two parts that are actually pretty intensive. One, you have to use uh, berries 108 times. Now that counts multiple times within one catch attempt. 
and then at the next page, it's catch 108 Pokemon. Um, so those two things, you have to have the berries and you have to have the Pokeballs to be able to do it, and it's a bit of a grind. And then after that, you have to spin eight Pokestops that you've never visited before. So if you are an avid spinner in your town where you live, it's going to be a little bit difficult and you're going to need to plan that out a little bit. Now, uh, as you will notice on the video that you just saw, that was Windows 2 and 3 of uh, the special research. So our video is a little bit, um, the, some of the things are a little bit backward, but um, as you can see on the second part of that, you got a lot of candy for that new Pokemon that you caught after you have already caught 108 and after you've already given out 108 berries. So uh, the third part of it, I actually didn't even see the tasks because I had already completed them. So I just got XP, 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 and uh, some trinkets. In the past, uh, those ones that have auto been filled out for me have been reach a certain level. Um, I haven't checked to see what they are either. I'm kind of waiting to come across them naturally. Um, but typically that's what they've been in the past. <laughs> So you're going to have a, an opportunity to get that shanks finally? Yeah, so um, over the course of the week, I have been following Discord quite closely uh, to see if I can grab as many shanks raids as possible because I am looking for that shiny shanks, the gold um, sort of puppy looking thing. Uh, I do want a shiny, so um, every opportunity that I see on Discord, I try to see if my schedule will allow that to happen. Um, you can see it's a tier one raid, so um, just a little bit of XP there with Lucky Eggs, 6,000, but um, it is a pretty easy raid to do by yourself. Uh, so um, as long as you have pretty good defenders, you can do a solo raid on your own. It looks like your uh, rare candy drought is over. Uh, are, are you getting those again finally? I am. So um, for a long while, if you have been watching or if you've watched our beginning videos, um, you will see us joking about the fact that Kevin always gets rare candies and I always get golden berries, but it seems like the tides have turned a bit and I'm starting to get more rare candy, but I'm also changing my approach a little bit because with our new recalibration of the, you know, meta Pokemon, if you will, the battle heavy ones, uh, they are going to be recalibrating their CPs and their stats and everything. So I don't necessarily want to sink rare candies into a Pokemon that's going to get um, uh, nerfed. <laughs> yeah, that's going to get pooed on a little bit. So um, I'm just going to wait and see how that happens. I think a lot of players are doing that. We talked about that in, in previous weeks where that upcoming change, and then they released it, and then they pulled it back. And so it's possible, actually, that, that if you're using a very updated IV counter, your IV counter may not actually be predicting accurate uh, levels currently. Um, so hopefully once all of those releases come out, we'll get that nailed down and all those counters will catch back up. After having checked uh, the appraisal system for a lot, uh, a long time, uh, you sort of know what that's going to look like. Uh, you know what an 85% is or a 91. And so recently, uh, with the Pokemon I've been catching, um, I can tell that the uh, Pokegenie app is sort of on the, on the fritz a little bit, but toward the end of the week it has caught up some uh, to the the appraisal system. So I'm just kind of waiting for that to wear through and for our raid bosses to get through before I, you know, count on wasting rare candy. But even then, depending on how you're using Pokegenie, you may have been getting broad strokes anyway. The way that you're technically supposed to do it is you're supposed to feed that Pokemon candy until you see the Stardust level change. And that means you're at the bottom of a new level, and the IV counter can accurately predict the level of the Pokemon. Now, that same cost in Stardust may span several spots in a level, so it might stay that way four or five power-ups. So if you don't know, then you don't know, and it may be general anyway. So as you see on the screen here, this is our special spooky, uh, special research Pokemon. Uh, Spiritomb, it is uh, a collection of different little spirits and such. They got stuck to, I think, a, a rock or a stump or something. Um, but this is the end product of our research. It looks sort of like um, a five-year-old scribbled with markers and crayons and drew a Halloween pumpkin. But it's still cool to fill out the Pokedex. And also, um, as it fills out your Pokedex, you can see more Gen 4 numbers in the Pokedex, 
Pokedex that have not been filled out yet. So there's that, that little sneak peek. Hey, Spidey. Nice to see you in the chat again. Thanks for the chat and also thanks for the host. For all of our followers and hosts, uh, we will see you at the end of the stream. We happen to miss one just there, um, but we'll see you at the end of the screen in the credits roll. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. So, Spidey, you haven't gotten yours yet. Are you stuck on the catching or the berries? Or where are you at in the process? I know Kevin they're, just finished the berries recently. Yeah, they're both difficult. Um, actually, I think I finished oh, the, the... The catching, sorry. The catching a little bit faster than I did the berries. Spidey says he has 76 caught. So that's uh, 76 out of 108. Yeah. Um, it, it seemed for me that after I hit 80, uh, it happened actually way faster than I expected. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe that was just because it felt like such a grind to get three quarters of the way there. Sure. Yeah, I did notice that um, your numbers were going a little bit faster once I started catching things for you. Hmm. But such is life. Yeah, Kegler's in Orange Town is great. It has those uh, triple polka stops right there. Toss some lures on there, hang out, mm -hmm. maybe enjoy a beverage and some chicken wings. Chicken wing. Ooh, so there is uh, one of the other Halloween Pokemon, Stunky. I always accidentally want to call it uh, Stanky or Skunky or something that's not its real name. Uh, so that's one of our uh, new Pokemon that's released from Gen 4. It looks like a cat meets a skunk, and when it evolves, it looks like a Demodog, a Demogorgon meets a skunk meets a cat. So Yeah, it's kind of got this weird Demogorgon Pepe Le Pew thing going on. Skunk tank. Um, it's kind of a weird, weird looking guy. I agree. Also, there's not really much that changes in its evolution other than its big fluffy tail comes up and like... Uh, does a weird pants labyrinth sort of thing. I didn't see the, uh, the Stunky at all until like day three of the Halloween event. That really? was one of the last ones I got. Hmm. Why the heck are you fighting this? Um, I am fighting this because there is going to be a new evolution for this guy in Gen 4. So, like I talked about before with the possibility of better IVs, I wanted to see, and I was already in the neighborhood, I wanted to see if I could get a good IV um, pillow swine, so that, um, sorry, uh, that, that's not pillow swine, I'm blanking on his name. Is that his name? Yeah. Oh, sorry, pillow swine. <laughs> Mental fart. Oh, plow swine, that's the, uh... Yeah, the evolution. Yeah. Um, but anyway, sorry, words are hard sometimes. Um, anyway, I wanted to really try and get a good IV one, and it's a pretty simple raid process, so, um, I did it. I think uh, a bunch of using a bunch of, is it Moltres or a Toe. A Toe, right? Uh, that seems like kind of using a sledgehammer where a scalpel would do. Well, so here's the thing. Um, level three, yeah. I believe it was level two oh, okay. or level three. Um, so because the Pokemon Pillowswine is um, ice type, hmm. um, you know, frozen guy, sort of mammoth, woolly mammoth in the winter. Uh, your fire types are going to be extremely helpful, and my ho -Oh, um, I don't remember if that's the one that has a fire move, but um, it does come up. So I use Moltres, Pillow Swine, or sorry, words, ho -Oh, uh, Moltres, Flareon, um, all of those typical fire guys that have uh, good and fast attacks. Because when you are soloing a raid, you want Pokemon that attack quickly. Um, that will help you in the in the raid. Which is a super bummer if you're using the recommended uh, Pokemon team that the app builds, and it drops you like three or four aggrons. Yeah, um, they're going to be slow moving. You're not going to have as many attacks off the block as you can. Niantic, if you are watching, the next feature that we want, aside from being able to scroll through the friends list, is to be able to check something like the star for favorite and remove a Pokemon from the recommended teams. If I don't want four aggrons selected, I should be able to check a little radio button and they should not be uh, suggested until we add them back. Yeah. Pretty sure these two Metagross might have been pre-selected or recommended, but I uh, left it anyway because I didn't have enough time to change You're them. cutting a little close there, 30 seconds. Was this you I by know. yourself? Yeah, this was me soloing it. So there we got more golden berries, more potions, and that's about it. Yeah. Oh, hey, look. The Mystic Team. All Mystic the Team! Woo! 
we recently started getting the uh, best friend bonus for raids for raid balls, and that's pretty cool. And yeah. I didn't realize that there was actually a team bonus for raid balls uh, at the at the other raids too. Um, I hadn't paid attention to that, so that was cool to see this weekend. Yeah. So your your bonuses are going to be uh, your best friend or any kind of friendship bonus. Uh, you're going to have the team contribution bonus, and then um, whatever. Uh, team is holding a gym. I believe there's a bonus for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that was one I just discovered this weekend. So, yeah, those are the three that will help you uh, get more balls as you're trying to catch some Pokemons. I really like the way the raid balls look, and it'd be cool if you could keep those two to, to reuse. It would, but I think that uh, that would quickly become um, yeah. something of nothing. Yeah, it would probably be a game balance issue eventually. Yeah. But since I'm still holding on to my solid sub-50% catch rate for higher level raid bosses, uh, I'm still fantasizing about being able to save those up. But you won't have any to save since you're not catching them. I'll have them, them from the lower levels. You can use oh. them at the higher levels. Oh, I see. Okay. I have it all planned out. Uh-huh. So I think here is part of our awkward video situation with the special research. Um, I tried to give enough time in the reading of it that, you know, people watching could read it. Um, but I got a little antsy. So that's the first section. You can see the great throws and the... Um, the Oh, yeah, the catch 10 ghost type, etc. So that's uh, a little backwards, but now you know what it is because we already saw Spirit Tomb. Yeah, definitely cool to be able to catch those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were powering through your new evolutions last week. Some of these were from last week when oh, your videos got cut. Okay. So uh, it does pop around a little bit, and that's why the things are out of order because I was gotcha. trying to grab some of your evolution footage from last week. Yeah, I was kind of wondering why this was here, um, because I'm pretty sure I evolved that within the first couple days of Gen 4 release. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually encountered um, that secondary form, Stavaria. Mm -hmm. um, vowels are hard. Uh, the very first day that Gen 4 was released, before oh, nice. I ever saw a little cute bird, hmm. uh, Starly. So um, that was neat. Yeah, I, I really like the starters for this generation. Um, what, what generation is the Cyndaquil? Three. And, okay, yeah, I didn't really care for those starters a whole lot. Like, none of them I thought were overly interesting. Uh, but I pretty much like all of the starters mm -hmm. at the, this most recent generation. Of the genre. I do have to say that um, I am sort of smitten with Piplup because it's so cute. But I do like uh, Turtwig because it is uh, just really awesome. And Torterra, like, carries Earth on its back in a tree. So, like, what's not to love? I'm still saving up. I didn't get enough candies to, uh, to evolve from oh, really? uh, Grottle yet. And so I'm, I have, like, 73 candies uh, for that. And I have not seen many Turtwig around town. I'm mm -hmm. seeing a bunch of Venonats. I'm seeing more Weedles than I anyone needs yeah uh and then like maybe once a day a turtwig that's <laughs> it so like i think those ratios are getting cut down from the glut of the early release yeah i'm pretty sure grottle and torterra are like from a 1990s dinosaur movie franchise if you know what i'm saying I would watch um, that. you know which one i'm talking about oh well maybe not the dinosaurs oh with long necks yes yes <laughs> he definitely does look like that i'm pretty sure that's like Maybe family, because they look similar. If anyone in the comments can remember the name of the dinosaur from the Land Before uh, Land Before Time? Yeah. Land Before Time. The ducky used to ride on this one, the, the kind of Ankylosaurus, Stegosaurus looking guy. If anyone in the comments can remember that name, I can't. <laughs> but yeah. Another Spinda? How many of you... There's eight, there's eight in, this, in this version of the game. Um, um, I think I only have th three uh, individual ones. Well... So I'm not quite sure. I can go to my Pokedex here and look. Um, I actually had a friend trade me my first Spinda, which was the Howie Mandel. And um, I then caught a couple other forms. And now I have three different forms of Spinda, but nice. I have a total of like probably eight or ten. Mm. So um, several of them are repeats, but still... That would that's really good trade fodder in case other people are catching different forms or don't get one. Are those only from eggs? Uh, Spindles? Yeah. No, and they're researches? they're only from researches. Oh, ah, okay. 
I don't think they're from eggs. If, I thought it was both. But if I anybody know. knows in the comments, um, I believe it's just from the research task. Um, make some great throws or whatever. Wherever those ones are in Morgantown, I have a suspicion that they're downtown. I don't hit them very much. They are all over and they migrate. So if you follow the Discord, um, at least ours, there's a section for field research and you can find where people report uh, different tasks, whether it be for rare candy or for spindas. And so um, oftentimes those show up in the Discord. But um, even if not, it's make three great throws in a row, but it only says make three great throws. So, mm -hmm. um, or make three, I believe it's great. Um, make three great throws. So, yeah. Cool. I should say that one more time. Make three great throws. How many great throws? Three. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was really excited to have a new special research to work on. Um, that, when, that was not a part of the game uh, early on when I first started playing. Mm -mm. And so when I came back to the game, it was already a thing. And so the, I, I was so way, you jumped in way behind on the Mew quest. But like when I came back to the game, like that was the thing I was presented with. And I really liked that part of the game. So here we are with the little Drifloon from last week that uh, didn't make it into the cut from footage. Uh, so this is the little balloon that has a super cute shiny form. Um, but here we are with our fun new big balloon. It kind of looks like a Dr. Seuss steampunk hot air balloon. Yes, exactly that. I do like its little uh, call noise. I think it's a cute little tune. I have the I have the video volume cranked way down so that I'm sure they can hear a little bit. So of that, they probably, probably not, can't. Not too much. Yeah. Bummer. But yeah, I was uh, I was able to finally evolve one of these guys today. Is that your not, first? Not today, but this week. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, nice. I, had, I had a bunch of firsts with uh, a glut of Halloween Pokemon. Because you came back late yeah. in, the, in the stage, so he didn't get all of the Halloween release from last year, uh, which was our our Gen three Halloween Pokemon like Sableye, Duskull, Shuppet, etc. So he's just now getting on that train. And you had traded me a Pikachu with a hat because um, yeah. I missed that event last time. But which hat? now the Pikachu's the witch hat. Uh, now the Pikachu with a witch hat is all over the place and mm -hmm. uh, will definitely also help you make a dent towards that Pikachu fan metal if you're trying for that. And also there's a possibility of a shiny Pikachu with a hat. And um, I'm not sure if it's in the footage, but I hatched a shiny P or not shiny words. I hatched a Pichu with a witch's hat and it's super adorable. So um, let us know in the comments if you have seen those or if you've got one shiny or otherwise, um, they're super cute. I ended up with a uh, Pichu with a summer hat, but that's the only hatted Pichu that I have. Mm. All of those are hatched, right? They're not out and about. Pichu, yeah. yeah. Yep, hatches. I do uh, have a summer hat and now a witch's hat Pichu. I don't think I have the uh, birthday hat or the ash hat or any of those, um, but it's been a while since we've seen those, so it's gone. And this was one I was really excited about, the Aloran Marowak. Uh, I had I only got my first Marowak actually at the end of the Beldum Community Day. One of the local players had an extra one and traded it to me. Um, I needed it to fill out my Pokedex. I am one away from the original 151, which is pretty exciting. And uh, one of the other players traded me a Marowak to help get me a little bit closer. And they said, oh, have you seen the Alolan one? And I was like, no. And he showed it to me. He's like, it's super cool. And I'm like, oh, no, I must have it. And uh, so then I put a thing out on our Discord uh, where you can request for sightings. And we were just coming from our first Giratina raid, which we'll see later in the video. And someone said, uh, popped up, there was one nearby. So we like, pulled a hard turn and popped and went for our first Marowak raid. I have um, done, well, let me phrase this. When the Alolan raids were first out, I attempted to solo an Alolan Marowak raid and failed miserably. Um, and so I had sort of stored that away in the chest for when I eventually get one. But we hadn't seen them for a while because they had gone out of circulation. But now with Halloween um, and Marowak sort of being a cool Halloween looking guy, um, Marowak came back and uh, But the other one looks super cool because they got like the spinny uh, bone thing. Yeah, and, and sort cool. of like the ghost flames, like just ghost the col rider. coloring is really cool. Yeah. But we actually, uh, I think there's actually more footage of that later on, but we actually failed in our first attempt. We thought we could... 
do it ourselves. And then we called for reinforcements on Facebook and in Messenger and on Discord. Yeah. And uh, luckily, uh, a few people came to help us out. Mm -hmm. And so we, I was actually able to catch that a little Marowak. And I don't, none of my footage is really in this early part of the video because I was trying to make up for last week's uh, video error. So it's mostly Heather's footage, but I was really excited to get that a little Marowak. Mm -hmm. So you just saw my Empoleon, uh, the final evolution of Piplup. Um, I did evolve all of those starters the first probably three or four days uh, hmm. because I was lucky to see several Chimchar right off the bat, and I was using all of my pin apps, um, which coincidentally, um, I used several of them before the October Community Day for Beldum. So um, I then had to try and restock up on pin apps before Community Day so that I could get all them candies. There's actually been an increased uh, candy reward for this event also, right? So that's Absolutely. That's a huge big deal. It's a double catch candy reward. So it's two times candy. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was in a different place. I was thinking rare candy. No, no, no. Uh, it, every Pokemon you catch is uh, you get double the amount of candy. So mm -hmm. if you if you add a pineapple berry to that, and if it's like a second evolution, you can end up with 20 can, uh, candies for that Pokemon mm -hmm. uh, for one catch, which is fantastic. Yes, and also in terms of added candy, we do have several field research tasks that are for a rare candy. So like evolve Shuppets and Duskulls, and you get rare candy for that. Thanks, buddy, for tuning in. We'll catch you at the end of the episode, and uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, on Wednesday at Geek Trivia. It's a guineas. Woo! Yeah, you really were uh, working on these... Uh, sh shinks. Shinks. I'm going to say Sphinx. Uh, <laughs> Shinxes? Shinxai? Shinxai? Shinxes? Shinxum? Shinxi? What do you think the plural form these is? These guys. You caught many of these. Yes, I yeah. did. I have one and only one. So I currently have in my Poka holder, if you will, I currently have four. I have, however, done enough raiding and um, solely raiding, I haven't hatched one, that I could evolve up to the next form. So I do have enough, and I've continued to do Shinx raids. Well, I, I got one and only one, and it was from an egg, and it was during the double candy thing. So I evolved that one, having only ever acquired one. Wow. Because uh, it, it got, gave me 27 candies for hatching that egg, and it took 25 for evolving. Nice. So as you can see here, uh, this is our... Special spooky release uh, raid boss for our, you know, level five, uh, tier five raid boss. It's Giratina, as Kevin calls it. I keep, I keep I'm mistaking it as Giardia, uh, the, which is the not that. you get when you drink from impure water sources yeah. for hiking. But that does kind of look like what you might find if you have that. So it definitely looks like a some kind of bug virus thing. Yeah, I kind of thought maybe it was the thing that you find deep down in the bottom of a pool or in the bottom of a skimmer basket in the pool. I don't know. Or maybe something that a Transformer shat out. That's the other option. There's also that. This was our first Giratina raid. Mm -hmm. And uh, were you, did you catch this guy? I did not. Bummer, I caught it with the first ball. Yeah, okay, watch out. So, um, un, I guess atypically so, Kevin caught it on the first try, on the first ball that he hit it with. And I didn't catch it. Out of, what is it, eight raids now that we've done, I have caught six of them, but that first one was not one, and I was not happy. I'll tell you that. I haven't hit that many of the raids. Uh, I've only hit six, uh, and of that, I've caught three. The two of them were on the first ball that hit it. The third one I had to work for, I was down to like the last two or three balls. Um, but that still keeps me at my solid sub 50% catch rate for these raid bosses. And you're operating at what, 75%? With six yeah, out of eight? Six out of eight. So, so that, that disparity for our pseudo random number generator gods exists. Uh, so, in terms of beating Garatina, you are definitely going to want to focus your, um, your counters. Many of them will look similar to what you have been using for Mewtwo and or Deoxys. Now, uh, with that in mind, dragon moves are going to be extremely effective against Giratina. But with that in mind in terms of how many people you need, it is a level 5 boss. But um, I would say you need at least 5 
decently prepped people to beat this um, and get the opportunity to catch it. Six and above makes it way easier, but definitely five in my experience. That being said, we also saw a marked difference between having nine players and having 13. Oh, sure. Uh, that we, it took almost 50 seconds longer with nine than 13. So when you're, if you're building a group, definitely pay attention to that. You may be able to do it with a lower number, um, but obviously your chances uh, for getting it in the t time you have is gonna be increased the more players you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we went from 13 to nine, I was actually a little bit nervous because it was taking almost a full minute longer. So um, we did try it with five and we got it down uh, to three seconds and it was in the very slim margin of red. Um, we didn't complete it that time, but the next time we tried it, we had six and uh, we were able to beat it with no problem as long as everybody had decent counters. So um, it did take us down to the wire, but we were able to complete it, so. I'm just watching this guy do like back to back to back defensive moves. At one point I yeah. saw it do five defensive moves in a row and it's yeah. like buddy calm down and get in the ball that's the real trick with giratina is that um it's a jumpy one it likes to struggle and so you're going to have to be careful when you're throwing your curveballs that you're not going to just throw it into its defensive move again and again and again or if you're me you do that anyway and then you, you know, yell at it yeah well there's also that uh, what kind of IV spread have you seen on the Giratinas that you've caught thus far? Have you run them through yet? I have. Um, the lowest that I have, I believe, is a 70, and then I've got a 76, and then most of them are staying in the 80s, and I think I have one that's like 91. Mm. So um, not bad, pretty good, but no no hundreds yet. I've only got three. My lowest is a 73% IV, and then I have one that's 80, and then one that's 84%. And so that's the spread that I've been looking at so far. But the 73 seems pretty low for a level 5 raid boss. Yeah. Uh, like, unhappily low. I believe we have a special trade in mind, don't we? Uh, we do. Yeah. yeah. We were thinking of trading one another a Giratina with the possibility of getting a better rerolled stat background. Of course, the possibility is that you also end up with, like, really shit IVs. It's um, true. That's a possibility. So I'm only going to do my sub-81, the one that's 80% 84. We're, we're going to keep those. I'm not going to roll dice on that. Sure. But man, this Lola Marowak looks so cool. Right? Look at that bone with the green... the green gas stuff. I don't even know what it is. It just looks cool. It's like your black magic color guard of Pokemon. It's just out there swirling. It's like some witch flame mojo that's green. I don't know. It's super cool. I dig yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the first time we went up against it was just the two of us, and uh, we, we tried valiantly, but it we just definitely didn't failed. Out. Um, I did get to use Beardy, my uh, Alolan go uh, Golem, uh, which is 100% IV, which was a uh, pleasure to find. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, he's pretty powered up, but. Yeah, we just couldn't hack it with two people. This was level four, right, or three? Uh, I think four, three? I'm not sure. If you know, four. post in the comments. I think it's four also. And so the two of us uh, together just, just couldn't hack it. Um, I, although I leveled up after this, and maybe that may, would have made a difference or something. Not necessarily. It depends a lot on your uh, counters that you choose, what their move sets are. Um, what your overall proficiency is in terms of dodging or attacking, if you do that, um, and um, also how much time you have. So I don't do a whole lot of dodging unless the Pokemon is doing a lot of one-hit kills. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if it's a, a level 5 and it's doing one-hit kills and I can see that move charging up, that, that's kind of the only time I dodge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually attempt to dodge, um, but it, it doesn't always happen. Again, uh, in terms of your Pokemon selection, I would suggest you not use Regirock because its attacks are fairly slow. So we talked earlier about how um, fast attacks matter. Um, Regirock is okay, he's fine, but um, it would be better if its charged attack was a little bit faster. But even in this case, you can see we're down to sub 30 seconds and we still have greater than a third of the Pokemon's uh, CP or hit points left, and we're just not going to make it, uh, regardless of what that is. So it's true. Uh, definitely, don't buy off more than you can chew. We thought we could hack it, but just two people couldn't do it. And you also never know who you might find uh, at the raid with you. So there is a possibility that if you try it on your own and you fail, that somebody else may pop into the Discord and say, "Hey, I'm coming. I'm on my way." 
or that somebody's already in the lobby. So there's a possibility of that. So we did call in for reinforcements. We were able to fight it again. And I think we had five people in the raid that time, and we were able then to uh, catch that Pokemon. Yeah. Who's that Pokemon? But yeah, I'm really pleased to, to have this guy. Yeah. Super cool and super spooky. I was noticing, so in the Pokedex, you know, you now you can see the, the different uh, sexes of the Pokemon. You can also see the Alolan versus regular, but you mm -hmm. cannot see the hatted Pikachus. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah, there's, no, there's, no, there's no space for them. I went looking, I went looking to see if oh. uh, there was there, and there's nothing. Hmm. So you just have to keep them in your collection, yeah. which is why I have a list of like 40 different Pikachu forms that I keep, because Pichu with hat, Pikachu with hat, shiny Pikachu, shiny Pikachu with hat, Shiny Raichu, Raichu with hat, <clears throat> Shiny Raichu with hat. There are just so many options. Yeah, but generally I think the Pikachus with a hat look better than the Raichus. Yeah, Raichus. I agree. Uh, so I only evolve a hatted one if I have more than one. Same. So I've got something stuck in my throat. Okay. <clears throat> so here you can see we're doing another uh, Giratina raid. Um, I am using my uh, Mewtwo with shadow ball so that's an x-rayed mewtwo and you can see that he's kind of getting beat up by giratina with those big moves yeah so uh i would basically just re reuse my De deoxys team uh which also has my legacy mewtwo with shadow ball mm -hmm. yeah for some reason i also chose one of my other mewtwo's that has a fighting move as you can see, that wasn't particularly effective, so don't do that. Um, know the move sets that your Pokemon has uh, before you decide to put them in your party, because that was my mistake. But with so many people, it didn't seem to matter much. Yeah, we've got a pile of people here, so we're still above of more than 200 seconds left on the clock, and we've got this guy definitely against the ropes, so Woo! this was a... Uh... A pretty easy one. I think we had, a couple of these we had maxed out at 20. Um, others were mm -hmm. somewhere between 9 and that number. Yeah. But yeah, we also went to a, a group of us uh, formed an informal uh, raiding party and went around town this weekend trying to hit those level 5 raids mm -hmm. and uh, pick up those raid bosses. Rare candy! Yeah, so your, your uh, dry spell truly is over. Now you have some rare candies. Woohoo! Look at all those balls. So I don't remember which one this is. I don't know if I catch it or not. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not something I'm about order, but in theory, it's your fourth one. In theory, um, I'm not really sure. But yeah, it's, I've, I'm glad that, like level five guys are changing up, and that we definitely have an opportunity to get some. Uh, I would have been pretty bummed out if we'd raided an entire day and I got none. Actually, um, I think this might be yours. Your footage. No, that's not. no. Our footage looks very different. Okay. Well, I was just looking at the, the ball spinning, and I thought maybe it was yours. That is a, a left-handed person spinning the ball. Yeah, yeah. Nice spin this way. And you can see me there just throwing away balls because of the defensive move. Yeah, the defense move, whether it's the, the head the headbutt kind of move or the jump, uh, it's just it's a really active Pokemon, and mm -hmm. so either you need and you have to choose between golden uh, golden raspberry or a nanap berry to slow it down. And man, they're just, you can't do both. And so it's, it's all over the place. So there's a lot of spinning and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the opportune moment. And then sometimes you're just wrong. Or you'll do, you know, you think, all right, he's done three defense moves in a row. Surely they won't be four. And so yeah. you throw the Pokeball and there's four. One thing that I like to do that um, sometimes works, a lot of times it does, um, I won't say every time, but I will um, give it a berry and then I will wait for its next defensive move and throw it as I think it's about three quarters of the way through that move, so that by the time the Pokeball gets there, um, it hits right as the Pokemon's finishing its move. It's usually a pretty good plan, again, for Giratina, because it's one after another. Not always successful, but... I don't usually have the uh, the careful timing or aim required to make that work, mm -hmm. um, usually because I'm flustered and yeah. yelling at them. Yeah, which, that's true. Weirdly enough, doesn't seem to help. Yeah. So you can see I tried that method here, and waiting, and that one worked, but the last one didn't. So, hedge your bets, whichever way. Mm. This is a grind for you on this one. Yeah, there, I think, were one or two that I caught in the first couple Pokeballs. Most of them have been down to the wire, though, which is a 
little bit stressful, yeah. but I'm still happy with the catch. So um, first ball or last ball, it's still a catch. But that day we did uh, four or five raids this weekend. I only caught one of the guillotine the entire day. Wow. So, or yeah. two, sorry, two. So, but this is yours, your footage. Yeah. Yep, my phone format's a little bit different than yours, and I sized the video to your phone today since it was mostly yours. Mm -hmm. So, right into his defensive move. That, that's that's kind of my MO there. Luckily, I had that second one like pretty pretty much right after, and, and he saved it. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was tired and took a break. Hey! Same. Look at that. Counts as one of your catches. That was uh, my, my first, uh, the first one we did. For the spooky research, it counted. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So let's see. I couldn't see the the rating there, but I think this was eighty or eighty-four percent. Oh, nice. So what else do we have going on this week? Uh, well, we, we had have, a lot. Yeah, we have we have a bunch. Uh, we learned about a new Meltan evolution. Oh yeah. Uh, Mecha Meltan. That's, that's not, right. not the name. It's Mel Metal. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but it does look like a souped-up Meltan on roids with some metal. So it's pretty cool looking. Hey, you leveled up. Uh, but yeah, so the, the new Meltan evolution was released, and we definitely uh, have that confirmed how it will interact with mm -hmm. uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and yep. uh, Pokemon Go, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. We also have the Gengar event coming up. Uh, that's just this Saturday, right? Yes. So uh, this Saturday, there is the possibility to sort of round out our uh, spooky events that there will be a Gengar in raids, and you will have, I believe, five raid passes given to you so that you can raid for Gengar with the possibility of a shiny Gengar. Mm. Um, so that's new and fancy and everybody needs one. So uh, do go out Saturday, whatever your local time is. Um, there's an announcement in the news section of the app and I'm definitely planning on trying to find a couple shinies. But don't pull a me and accidentally spend, because uh, I forgot about the event entirely, and I evolved two Gengar this morning uh, and spent like, uh, what is that, 250 uh, Gengar candies. I basically took myself down to zero to evolve two, because I was like, I need some more Gengars. And so then I evolved two, and now I'm like out of candies. So yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't do that. That's a, that was a total lack of foresight. I just totally forgot about the event. Mm -hmm. uh, they also announced the next uh, Pokemon Go Community Day. So we are going to see one of our Gen 3 starters. The uh, Fire Weasel. Fire Weasel, otherwise known as Cyndaquil. So um, many people were somewhat ambivalent. Some people were disappointed. Some were happy because candies. Um, I'm sort of in the middle of the pack. I have enough and I've got my Typhlosion, but I also think it's kind of cute. So um, I'm happy for Community Day always, generally. Yeah, so we had uh, Meltan, we had the Gengar event, we had the Halloween event, we've got the next Community Day. Uh, there are a couple of other things. Yeah, there's happened. the announcement about um, Pokemon Go being able to track your walking distance in the background. Um, if you have the app open. So that's if true. you have the app open and your screen off or it's in the background, it will continue to track things for egg hatching and things like that. Um, so. Previously, if you didn't at least have the screen on, which is why the battery saving mode was useful, uh, if you didn't have the screen on, you were not going to get credit for eggs, and at some point in the near future that will change. Mm -hmm. We also have the announcement of our November field research task. The seven day catch is going to be um, one of our Pokemon that is elusive, uh, Shedinja. Now, there have been some questions as to how that's going to work since uh, Shedinja is the final form, but also um, we're not sure because there's supposed to be another evolution that happens with that one. So I'm curious to see how that's going to work out come November 1. Um, but either way, it's a new Pokemon. So, well, a Pokemon that's been in our Pokedex, but that we haven't been able to access. So. And I don't think this was this week. It was actually last week. But if you're an Android uh, player... There is an AR Plus update. You have to have a phone capable of using Google AR Core. You have to download that separate app, uh, and in doing so, you will uh, once you update the Pokemon Go app, you will have access to uh, an, a more advanced AR Plus engine, which kind of tracks the Pokemon's location if you're using the AR Plus 
um, a little bit more accurately and give you some better AR pictures. And you may be able to get a better AR picture of the new Shiny they're releasing, Shiny Caterpie. Come November, uh, with Shedinja's release, we're going to see Shiny Caterpie as a possibility. So people are actually going to click on Caterpies again, and you may get a cool picture opportunity. So if you're one of those six people who really wants a Shiny Caterpie, now's your chance. I want a Shiny Caterpie. I want a Shiny every Pokemon. I will always take Shinies. In fact, I am lined up for Shiny trades forever because always Shiny. The other ones that I really would like, I really would like a shiny Charizard. Uh, yeah. I think the there's the, the he's if you if you were a motorcycle, he would be murdered out. He's all black. Uh, it's a kind of matte black Charizard, and it looks super cool. Whatever. But yeah, I always talk about shinies, so I'm not going to talk about shinies today as much. But I love them. But yeah, so there. Uh, two, three. There have been six Pokemon Go news updates in the last seven days. Yeah. So I don't know when Niantic is going to run out of stream for that. Um, uh, but, man, we've had nothing but back-to-back -back events pretty much since late June. But don't you think this is a good ramp-up for the release of uh, Let's Go Pikachu Eevee oh, on the definitely. 16th? Definitely. This is totally a PR thing, and I'm totally cool with it. I love all these news things, and I'm so happy that it's happening prior to the new game as we see the release of new aspects um, with, you know, Pokemon care stations, with um, new transferring back and forth between Switch and Go. Um, there are going to be a lot of cool things. So one of the cool things about have, being able to transfer from Pokemon Go to Let's Go is uh, if you have to pick, you have to generally pick between Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, and there are some limited Pokemon that only exist in each game, just like every version of Pokemon since Red and Blue. But they're all basically Gen 1. But they're all Gen 1, and they're actually all pretty common in Pokemon Go. So, mm -hmm. since you can trade with yourself from Pokemon Go to the Let's Go game, it really matters a lot less which one of those you choose, um, because things like uh, Growlithe, or, I mean, they're all... Vulpix. Yeah, Vulpix. Those sorts of things. Um, they're all pretty common from Pokemon Go, so... Fileplume, those guys. You can pull up that list, make sure you save an extra one of those now, and then whenever you pick Eevee or Pikachu, even if you have to solo that and you don't have someone to trade with on the Switch, you can trade with yourself and you can acquire, mm -hmm. you can finish out your Pokedex that way. But let us know which um, version of the game that you're thinking about getting, if you are. Um, because they do have slightly different things. I do think they're going to be very similar, but I am super excited about the game release. We actually haven't picked uh, which one we're going to get yet, have we? No. Have you? <laughs> well, so the Switch uh, comes as a bundle. So I'm going to do the Switch bundle, um, and it'll come with one Eevee controller and one Pikachu controller, um, but I actually haven't decided which one. I'm leaning toward uh, the Eevee edition because Eevee is my one true love in terms of Gen 1 Pokemon, but um, I could be swayed. Hmm. So yeah, let us know uh, in the comments or uh, somewhere else on social media if you follow us there. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, all YouTube. The things. We're on all of the things. Pop in a comment, let us know whether you're getting Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu, and why you chose that one. Yeah. Uh, was it the special Pokemon that swayed you, or just a deep and abiding love for your favorite Gen 1 Pokemon? I feel like we have endless Giratina raids here. Well, I mean, we spent an entire weekend, uh, you know, hitting those level 5 raids, so... That's true. That's yeah, true. there's just a couple more of these, and uh, still my solid sub 50% catch rate. Hopefully that changes for me, just like your rare candy thing changed. Ooh. I can't remember what I spent it on, but I spent like 97 rare candies on something recently, and then my, my acquiring rate of them dropped off precipitously. Mm. Uh, so now I'm like in a slow grind to get them back. I'm actually in a dearth of golden raspberries now. I got like um, 70 of those. Yeah, I did. But then um, I was using them for all the raid bosses and um, fighting off somebody tearing down the gym in two minutes. So um, I'm now low on berries. I think I might be in the teens or in the, the 20s. Um, but yeah, I'm looking to do some low level raids to get berries and such. You're a little bit salty about getting kicked out of the gym so quick, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's part of the game. Uh, there's a competitive aspect and a cooperative aspect. Sure. It is a bummer. Sometimes, you know, you're like you may you know, have to travel or walk or go somewhere and get to a gym, you know, spend some time battling it, put your guy in, and then like two to three minutes later, you're kicked back out. Right. And if it's that short, you get no candies for it. Coins. 
uh, yeah, sorry, coins. I'm not exactly sure what the minimum is, but it's definitely more than two or three minutes. I think it's eight or ten. Um, but even then, you're only going to get like, you know, one, one. To your, towards your max for the day of 50. Yeah. Uh, even after like two or three hours, you're going to get in the teens or 20s of coins, if that. Uh, so you definitely want to be in there for a good chunk of time, but that's not always in your control. But generally by about eight hours, you're going to hit your, oh, yeah, your totally. 50 coin max. Totally. Yeah, so after that, there's no point in feeding your Pokemon berries um, unless you are trying to tide it over till the next day when you can get 50 new coins, in which but case... But you don't get to double dip. No, no. I'm just saying if you've already had a Pokemon kicked out of the gym today mm -hmm. and you got your 50, it might behoove you to give it berries to last until 12.01 a.m., then get kicked out for 50 the next day. Um, but you just have to be strategic. So recently, that gym where we had the Marowak raid, they actually, uh, Niantic moved that gym, which mm -hmm. they will do occasionally upon the request of a property owner or for a couple of other reasons. Um, so they, they actually, I don't know, did they conflate two or did they just move it? Nope, they just moved okay, it. So are you sure they didn't conflate two? I'm sure. So they moved it uh, from a place you could hit next to the road and a little turnaround um, at a local church, um, which is also like the preschool drop-off lane. Um, but people were hanging out there and spending some time there. And so they moved it still onto their own property into the backyard, so they weren't like kicking people out. Um, but that gym is much less frequented, so I had a shiny Metagross in there for like three and a half days. And I called out on Discord, and I'm like, guys, I've been in this gym. Please come kick me out. Um, but he just languished there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what happens when uh, gyms are in a not really strategic location. I had one out in a national park. Uh, it was a gym, and it lasted there for, I think, four or five days, just hanging out at the bottom level of inspiration before um, eventually somebody kicked it out. Well, there's that one guy on Reddit who had a Pokemon that was stranded for like 400 days or something. Yeah, it was nuts. Because one, once, you're, once your CP or your uh, heart gets to zero, you still have to be kicked out of the gym. You don't just, you don't just time out. Right. So even if your CP is at zero and you're not feeding it berries, if no one's fighting in that gym, you're, mm -hmm. you're just hanging. Yeah. Yeah, they don't move uh, gyms too often, but at the request of a property owner or some, for some other considerations, they do. So That's true, on occasion. And you'll see sometimes um, the addition of Pokestops, that is a thing. If you're level 40, you can make suggestions on that. If you're not, um, that window is kind of closed to everyone else. But um, occasionally they will crop up and you'll see the little ring around it. Um, for a stop that you haven't hit yet, which is particularly relevant for your spooky special research. You need to hit eight Pokestops that you've not hit before. Um, so you will have to go out of your comfort zone and your typical spot stops um, to find some new ones. I happen to have a couple that I knew of already, so it was pretty easy for me to wipe that out as soon as I decided to take the time to do it. Yeah, I hit six of my eight this past weekend uh, just because there were... Uh, large parts of the university campus, which is nearby, that I don't frequent very much. And so there were just some densities of Pokestops there. So I've just got two more to finish that, and I should probably have that this week. Yeah. And then I'll be able to complete that uh, new spooky special research. Now, the, the thing with that spooky research, uh, you actually get the opportunity to catch Spiritomb, the new Pokemon, in the second phase of that research. So as soon as you finish the 108 catches, regardless of whether you've visited those eight stops, you get to catch it anyway. But as you finish the other challenges, that's when you get the extra candies, you get the extra berries, extra XP. So um, it would behoove you to go ahead and start catching and feeding berries and such. Um, but yeah, yeah. If, you ha if you haven't made a huge dent in that progress yet, start hoarding those berries and start saving Pokeballs because you're going to need a pile of them. Yep. It's actually strange they have that at the second uh, second portion page of that event. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder what the decision making behind that was like. I don't know. I do know that the 108 is symbolic. So because there are 108 pieces of Spiritomb, they wanted to sort of play onto that. Um, so that one was strategic. 108 is an important number in Hinduism, yeah? Um, I don't recall. I it's been so. too long since I've studied. Yep, but yeah, so it's definitely, definitely, uh, definitely fun. I like the special researches. I'm glad there's been more. Uh, when I finished the Mew Quest, there was this kind of like post achievement letdown where I was just like, oh, what am I gonna do now? Like I spent mm -hmm. so so long trying to get this Pokemon. I got him, and what next? Yeah, I felt that way with both Mew and Celebi. 
so as soon as I finished Mew, though, uh, luckily Celebi came out not too long after. Um, but then once I finished Celebi, it was like, oh no, I have nothing. What is what? What do I do? I just catch things. What What do you mean? There's no special. Uh, so it was nice to get back uh, another special research, and hopefully we get another one soon. Um, I, w I like those. I like working toward a goal and catching new mons. I just uh, recently had a, on the screen a Mr. Mime pass out, and his like totally theatrical fainting move where he like spins around and then he's off just makes me chuckle every time I see it. Extra. All the extra. Super dramatic. Definitely Mr. Mime. I should probably evolve that hound door into a houndoon, yes. or the other way around. He's like he's in my my Deoxys level five dark hound doors? team. Yeah, the 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 baby. Pope? Yeah, and I should just evolve that cat because I yeah, didn't, I haven't yeah. yet. He's, he, he was just on the screen, and it's Aww. it's a lower evolution. It's a baby. Yep, there it goes. Nine rare candies for one raid is pretty decent. So in terms of Pokeballs, you got 15. That's particularly high. Yeah. We're just about finished here with these uh, Giratina raids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really wish I would have gotten more than three for all the raids that we did, but um, I'm glad that I definitely had more than one, because for the Mewtwo X raids, I only got one X raid invite. So I only have one Legacy Mewtwo, yeah. uh, and I only have one other from afterwards, just because we, we didn't catch him for all those X-Raids. Sure. But we've got two X-Raid invites coming up in the next uh, eight days. That's true. Um, so that will be pretty cool. So hopefully we'll get a chance to... Mm -hmm. So I got one for um, one of the X-Raid sponsored gyms in a local park, uh, and I am taking this one here. I did not get that. Uh, Get that invite. Um, she hit those gems more often than I did, but the invite system uh, is working in our favor this time. That's and true. And so I get to go to that one. Uh, and then we also, after this weekend of raiding with our group party, several of us did get invites. Um, I think most everyone who was there raiding with us got invites uh, because we raided at an X-Raid gym. So uh, we are looking forward to next week um, doing another Deoxys raid. As far as we know, it's still the Deoxys normal form. We've not heard any new announcements. And this will be our, well, third and fourth raids, correct? Yeah, but I still only have the one. Ah, so. So if, if, if the pattern works, I should catch this next one, hopefully. Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you about mine. I've caught the last two Deoxys, so um, I'm two for two there. Nice. But uh, one of our X-ray gyms, they actually moved it. Uh, the gym didn't move, but which one was an X-ray gym changed. Mm -hmm. uh, so pay attention to that. Luckily now there's a little blurb on the splash screen for the gym that tells you if it's X-ray eligible, which is better than just having to figure it out. Um, yeah. But they may have moved. So uh, It'll tell out. you uh, when you go to swipe the Pokestop part of the gym, up in the right-hand corner, it'll say whether it is an X-ray gym. So if it is, it'll have a little icon there that says X-ray gym. Yep. That's it. But yeah, definitely trying to uh, do raid activity there as the single best thing you can do to increase your chance to get an X-ray pass. Um, but they seem to be spreading those out pretty liberally. Like, I'm surprised how many we've got. Yeah, absolutely. Um we did get two for Mewtwo, but we were unable to make the one. But uh, with Deoxys now, we're hitting numbers three and four. Mm -hmm. um, now, it could help that our our gym badges are a little higher and that we're leveled up a little higher and that uh, we are raiding with people more often now. So those factors do play in. But the, um, uh, the data that Trainer Tips had a few months ago showed that more, uh, more than half of the people who got an X-ray in invite had a bronze level or lower. It's um, true. I haven't seen any updated stats on that. I, I hope someone is crunching those numbers because that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Because we're on our fifth X-ray invite. Sixth. One, two, three, four, five. This will be five and six. So that's, that's a bunch. And uh, there are people who you know, never got any Mewtwo uh, invites at all. So, uh, and we have five X-ray gyms in our area. Mm -hmm. So um, we have five. Yep. I there's know, three. Crops Park, Marilla Park. There are two at Marilla. Oh, there's two. And there are two White at Park? White Park. Okay. So five, at least five to my knowledge. I'm, there may be one other that I can't recall here, but yeah, most of those are going to be in parks. Uh, so you can also check your Open Street Maps data uh, to look for those. 
but yeah, so it's been another exciting week for Pokemon. Uh, we've got another level five, these more level five raids to get to. Uh, finally, trying to get these giant uh, spooky Pokemon done. The Gengar event uh, coming up Saturday to round out the week-long Halloween event has been fun. I really like that Pokemon does these kind of themed uh, mini events. And they've been more careful, I think, lately about dropping and hints and info. And if maybe playing their cards closer to their vest. And uh, so it's definitely been an exciting time to get back into Pokemon or to just start if you haven't played before. Uh, I've been out for quite a long time, um, partly from a work consideration. There was a an unofficial prohibition against playing, and so I'd kind of quit playing for quite some time. Um, but it was pleasant to get back, and especially the game had changed so much. There's a, a badge, actually, that uh, I don't... I have like 8 of 10, and I will never complete it. It was the function where you could uh, train at and power up a gym where you had Pokemon, and it was an early feature of the game. And I have 8 of 10 for my first level of that badge, and it's never going to get completed because that's gone. And so just how much the game has changed in uh, two and a quarter years has been astounding. Mm -hmm. You actually have one of those training ace badges, don't you? Um, I believe I have the middle tier. Um, let me look and see. But yeah, so if you're not an, an old-time player, uh, it used to be a thing where you could go to gyms and you could train up your own team's Pokemon. The equivalent of that is kind of feeding berries, um, sort of. Um, but you, it kept track of that. And so it's a little badge that looks like a boxing glove. Yeah, and you and would fight your own guys. I have 8 of 10, and it will forever stay that way. Mm -hmm. And that actually um, made the gym system quite hard, because if you had just a couple Pokemon in there, you could fight your own color, your own team Pokemon to level it up. And um, that was difficult. So I actually, in terms of my Ace Trainer badge... I have 478 out of 1,000. So I wow. wasn't stellar about it, but I did do a significant chunk of that. I had eight. Eight? Uh, but if you watch some of the early Trainer Tips video, they actually travel out to this island off the coast <laughs> um, and train at the gym. And that feature is totally gone. So if you watch some of these older videos, uh, it's you, weird. You, you might be confused as to what that mechanic was. Because just, That's it. Because it just doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's a bummer to be frozen at just eight of ten and not even get that first level. Yeah. I'm just going to hang out in my medallion rack just unfulfilled yep sad day but it's been an exciting time for pokemon to come back it really is and now that we have uh the expansion of things with the new switch game um i'm really excited to see where we're going um i know niantic has worked through a lot of bugs and a lot of things and won some players back some have completely sworn it off but um, I did stay true, aside from two months when I was mad for not catching uh, a Lugia, a single Lugia, in all of the raids that I did. But um, pretty consistent playing, at least getting everyday Pokestop and catch. So I'm pretty excited to see that, you know, some of the legacy things are now changing into new formats, and we're now having new options to do things. I've actually been waiting for October to end and the Suicune event to end um, because my seven-day Pokestop and seven-day Pokemon catching uh, events are out of sync and mm -hmm. it's driving me nuts. Uh, so I just need to take one day off and get them synced back up. But I could not take that break in October and still get five. Yeah. Uh, so now if that's not a possibility for November, I can take a day off, um, mm -hmm. probably November 1st, and then get those things synced back up. It doesn't matter for the game at all. It's just totally, uh, I just want Easier. them on the same day so I don't have to worry about it. Yep. It would be nice for the UI to have a marker of some sort to tell you where you're at in that streak. Because as of right now, there's nothing that tells you, hey, you're on a three-day streak and you're going to lose it if you don't spin a stop. Sometimes they will uh, give you a little shame notification that says, you're making great progress toward your X day stop. Uh, get to a Pokestop soon. I can almost never read that because it gets cut off on my phone. And when I go to like, I just... Can't oh. pull it down to see the whole thing. Yeah. So I don't get to see that very much. Yeah. It says, you're making great progress towards your Pokestops. Be sure to get out there today or something silly. But it would be nice for that to be on the UI. Maybe mm -hmm. on the same sh uh, sheet that tracks the uh, daily field researches. Mm -hmm. Be excellent. So uh, thanks for tuning in for Let's Play Games West Virginia. We have an exciting week coming up. Uh, tomorrow we are going to be playing the Fallout 76 beta at seven o'clock so please tune in for that that's actually right across the scroll screen right now uh, Wednesday is to be determined we may have someone fill in we have an event here in town that many of our streamers will be at 
Thursday, we have SMP, who plays Hearthstone. That time is going to be moved uh, back an hour to 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you've been tuning in to watch SMP play Hearthstone and I Am Dad Legend, that time is going to change, so please pay attention to that. Wednesday, we have uh, Bartender's Choice, where Andy plays whatever he kind of feels like on that Friday. Saturday, we have Retro with Dr J. Grow. If you remember the nostalgia of waking up early on Saturday morning and having the TV all to yourself, maybe a bowl of cereal and a bunch of waffles, and just hanging out with early morning cartoons on Saturday, you can relive that feeling with us on Let's Play Games West Virginia as J. Grow plays retro games on Saturday morning. And then my other show, Sunday, is called No Obvious Exits, where we play interactive fiction, text adventure games, and kind of harken back to an earlier time in games before graphics really mattered at all. Also, in about two and a half weeks, we have the release of our Switch game for Let's Go Pikachu, uh, Let's Go Pokemon, uh, sorry, words, Let's Go Pikachu Eevee. I'm so excited that I'm getting the words wrong. Anyway, that's coming out on Switch, so it releases on the 16th. Be sure to either tune in to someone who does have it or uh, go out and get one yourself. But you can probably tune in here too, because we'll probably play some on this channel. Oh yeah. So thanks again for tuning in. This is Let's Play Games West Virginia. I'm Kevin. This is Heather. And thanks for tuning in to Poke Mondays, and we will see you soon.